thank you that your blessings will flow in and through his life. That you will surround him, Father, with your presence. Your glory, Father. That's our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Pray, Father. Amen. Love you, Papa George. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was busy saying something else. Yes, I was busy saying that I want you to look at a, a, a video clip. It's all about um, somebody who's going to pass away. But it's scientists. Uh, let's look at the story. I don't need to tell you. Just let's have a look at this story. Six minutes. It's amazing. There's things that we, Pastor Delin said, there's things that we don't understand and know. And now God is revealing stuff to scientists, and they stand amazed, and we're supposed to know this. Thank you so much, uh, Tsepu. And I'm going to close this sermon by reading you a story that I read this week that just blew us away. A fascinating story of a, of a miracle that happened where miracles would never be expected in a scientist's lab. <clears throat> you know how everybody today is talking about following the science? Meanwhile, that's not even science. It's false science, falsely so-called. But this incident changed the entire direction of one scientist's life. His name was Dr. N. Jerome Stowell whose account of the experiment that he was making follows. We wanted to make an experiment to discover what took place in the brain at the moment of transition from life to death, Dr. Stoll recounts. They set up their experiment in a large pathological laboratory with infinite care using precision instruments. I was almost a devout atheist, Mr. Stowell recalls, Dr. Stowell recalls. I didn't believe that God was any more than a conglomeration of everyone's mind put together. And the good that was there, that was God as far as I was concerned. As for the real all-powerful God existing and loving us all with power over everything, I didn't believe that at all. But in the large pathological laboratory that day, he had an experience that gave a jolt to his religious tenets. We chose a lady whose family had sent her to a mental institution, but who had been discharged. The doctor could find nothing wrong with her other than she had cancer of the brain. This affected the balance of her body only. As far as her alertness of mind was concerned and in every other way, she was exceptionally brilliant. But we knew that she was on the verge of death and she was informed in this research hospital that she was going to die. Before informing her of this, they had attached a tiny pickup to her brain to ascertain what would take place there in the transition from life to death. They also put a very small microphone about the size of a quarter in her room so that they could hear anything she might say after learning of her impending death. Five of us, hardened atheistic scientists, perhaps I was the hardest of the group and the most atheistic, were in the adjoining room with our instruments, Dr. Stoll details the experiment, prepared to register and record what transpired. Our device had a needle pointing to zero at the center of the scale, to the right, the scale was calibrated to 500 points positive. To the left, the scale was calibrated to 500 points negative. We previously had registered on this identical instrument the electromagnetic power used by a 50 kilowatt broadcast station in sending a message around the world. The needle registered nine points on the positive. So they tested a system to give messages throughout the world. And when they tested this very powerful system, it only went to nine points. Remember that as I'm reading the story. As the last moments of the woman's patient's life arrived, she began to pray and to praise the Lord. Her prayers were so beautiful as they came through on the small microphone that they held the five listening men in the next room spellbound. They heard her ask the Lord God to be merciful to those who had despitefully used her. Huh. She didn't know she had a microphone on. Then she reaffirmed her faith in God. Dr. Stowell continued, telling him she knew he was the only power and that he was the living power. She told God he always had been and would be. She told him how much she loved him. Have you told God how much you loved him lately? Engrossed in the beautiful torrent of prayers escaping the dying woman's lips, the scientists completely forgot their experiment. We looked at each other and saw tears streaming down our faces. Scientific faces, Dr. Stoll relates. 
I had not shed tears since I was a child. Suddenly we heard the clicking sound on our forgotten instrument. We looked and the needle was registering a positive 500 and desperately trying to go higher. Bang, bang. It couldn't go anymore. It was bouncing off the limit. <laughs> to bounce against the 500 positive post in its attempt. By actual instrumentation, we had recorded that the brain of a woman alone and dying in communication with God had registered more than 55 times the electromagnetic power used by a 50 kilowatt broadcasting station in sending a message around the world. <laughs> what do we have to fear? Thoroughly astounded by their discovery, the scientists later tried the same experiment on a man lying in the research hospital stricken with a deadly social disease who cursed and took the name of God in vain when deliberately crossed by the nurse during the experiment. The needle immediately clicked back and forth against the negative 500 post. By actual instrumentation, Dr. Stoll recounted, we had registered what happened in the brain when that brain broke one of God's Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We had established by instrumentation the positive power of God and the negative power of the adversary. We had found that the beneficial truth is positive and that non-beneficial things covered by God's thou shalt nots of the Ten Commandments are negative in varying degrees. It is the presence, this is the scientist talking now, the atheist. It is the presence of God in us that gives us power, the extent of which we have no conception as to its magnitude. See what we're missing? Do you see what we're missing? And we're living for what? For the news and for reception of broadcasting when we have the ultimate broadcasting system right here? The effect of this experiment resulting in one of the most amazing scientific discoveries of all time was so great upon Dr. Stowell that he gave up his brilliant career as a scientist and has engaged in witnessing to the goodness and greatness of God ever since. <laughs> what are we afraid of? What are we worried about? When we get on our knees, we have nothing to fear. The power is overwhelming, it's astounding, it's beyond. And isn't it sad that we have to use a scientific experiment to gain the awesomeness of the power of God in us? Hallelujah, amazing. Why God is in us. Our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is God. And He dwells inside of us. Amen. And that's why when Christians pass away, there is the deep, I saw one. There is the deep peace that surpasses understanding on their faces. But the opposite is also true. People dying without Christ, most of them go through terrible things. Don't know what they see. I don't want to focus on that, but the positive is God is inside of us. And because of that, His power flows through us. Amen. Amen. Amazing. Thank you, Father, that you are our Father. Thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit, our helper, to dwell inside of us and to lead us. We thank you. We belong to you. You are our God. And we are your children. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, O oh Holy Spirit. Work in us. Use us for the glory of our Father. That's our prayer this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right, I want to show you two pictures again. I've shown this previously, but if Papa George was not here. No. Um, there was a few of you guys not here. I want you to show you the, these two pictures again. Do you remember this one? <clears throat> yeah, amazing. Amazing picture. And the other one. Thank you, Tsepu. It's the same story. 
It's the same story. I told you that week or that Sunday, I told you that we see, if we don't see ourselves like that, it means that we're believing a lie. Because God sees us as a lion. Amen. God sees us as a lion. He said in his word, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Um, let's go to a verse that Fulu also read last week. I think it was last week. Where did you read Fulu? You did not read. No, 2 Colossians 2. Let's quickly go there. You, talk, you spoke about the fragrance. Do you remember it? 2 Colossians 2. Romans 8, 7, 37. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. I'm, going, I'm reading 2 Corinthians 2. Let me just get the right scripture. These two Colossians 2. Verse 14, sorry. Verse 14. Verse 14. Now thanks to be, uh, be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Amen. Always leads us into triumph. That's God's heart. My brother and sister, that's why that picture is true. I once saw a, a video clip on TV, uh, nature thing. There was um, a few vehicles in a game reserve, and they were around 30. Uh, he, he hear us. What is the dragasi? Hyenas in, in, in the, uh, around the vehicles. And there was one lion, my lion, one, only one, my lion, a, 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 a lion and a half, you understand, a, a, my lion. And uh, these hyenas were around this lion, but they did not attack him. Sometimes some of them will have the courage just to get closer. And when he turn around, they scatter. But there was also vehicles around. And what happened, the lion moved around the vehicle, one of the vehicles. And the, one of the hyenas was not aware of this. And this lion got hold of this hyena on the, hyena on the neck and bit it and killed it. But as it was biting the hyena, it made a sound that, listen, I'm in trouble. And all, most of the, uh, the hyenas attacked the, tried to attack the Line. And the moment that line stood up, they scatter. My brother and sister, that's who you are. And guess what? We're more than 30 here. If one lion can do that, how much more as, as the body of Christ? If one lion can handle 40, 30, 40 hyenas, how much more is it possible for us to be more than conquerors in every, every situation? But the problem is, we don't see what God sees. Amen? When I look in the mirror, guess what? <laughs> I see sometimes a cat. It's true. It's true. Why? Why is it that we don't see what God sees? And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. We don't believe that we are more than conquerors in every situation. That we will triumph in every situation. Sometimes, guess what? The enemy knows us. We're down and out. But that's not who God created us. Amen. God created us to be the lions that rule and reign in his power. Remember, it's not our power. It's in his power. But we don't succeed always. What's the reason? And I was asking, God was asking, what's the reason, Chris, that sometimes you're like a cat? And God told me, 
there's one thing, there's three things that's important. Number one, God needs to be Lord of your life, the King of your life. I'm not talking to be born again. Listen carefully. You need to be born again. But there's something else when you declare and say, Lord, you're in charge of my life. I'm giving over. You understand? It's a different story. It's not about me, 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 myself. It's about you be Lord, my master. What's the meaning of master if God's your master? That you're bowing before him. It's not what you will, but it's what's his will for your life. Amen? You see, for the lion to rule, the cat needs to die. Amen. The only way for the lion to stand up if, is if, that's, if the cat dies. Deny yourself. Right. God needs to be Lord of your life. King of your life. Number two, you need the Holy Spirit. Being baptized with the Holy Spirit. There is no way that you will rule in life without being baptized. By, and being led by the Holy Spirit. No way. The third thing. It's a process. It's a process. Guess what? That line was not born like this. It started a small line, but it grew and grew and grew. And eventually, in four, uh, five, six, seven years, he became this massive line, my line. It's a process. The grown process of a Christian is to die. Amen. The process for us to become a line is for the cat to die, the self to die, to allow the Holy Spirit and God to grow in us. John 3, let's quickly go to John 3 verse 30. John said this. John 3 verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3, 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. My brother, sister, the only way for me and for you to be Christ-like, that's what I'm talking about. I must decrease. And he must increase in my life. Amen. His ways must become my ways. How do I get this? Where do I get this? Where do I get this? The dying process, my brother and sister, starts when we meet him face to face. In his presence. We become like him. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. Let's quickly go there. 2 Corinthians 3. 18. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. It says, but we all... With unveiled face beholding. As in a mirror. Did you, did, do you see the mirror? Of that picture. As in a mirror. The glory of the Lord. Are being transformed. Into the same image. Of a lion. That's my words. From glory to glory. Just. As by the Spirit of the Lord. It's in His presence we become like Him. It's in His presence that we become like Him. Guess what? As we were worshiping this morning, God is transforming us. It all depends of you. 
Some people will experience God's presence. Others will say, oh, it's a long song. Why are we singing this song? You understand? Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen with you. But as you worship, as you adore in his presence, guess what? God is, God is busy transforming you. Taking away stuff in your life that you battle with. It's in his presence. Amen. That's where the cat being transformed into a lion. When you meet him face to face. Moses, God said to Moses, you can't see me. If you see me, you're going to die. Guess what? When we spend time in his presence, guess what? Our nature dies and his nature becomes our nature. Amen? That's how Christ has been forming us. Not the only way, but it's when I spend time in prayer, in worship. Guess what? He's busy transforming me. Transforming me. Transforming me. My brother and sister, that's why prayer is not a list. Prayer is not when you ask God to do a few things for you. And begging and asking, please God, please God, do this and this for me. I need you. No. Prayer is when God speaks to you. And he's transforming you to be more Christ-like. And then he will send you out. Guess what? To destroy the works of the dogs of this world. Amen? Yeah. To listen. To destroy the works of the dogs of this world. There he hear us. The scavengers, the work of the devil, the devil to destroy the, his works. But the only way to get that is to die in yourself and allow Christ to be formed in us. Amen. Amen. My brother and sister, that's our calling. That's who you are. It's a process. Not, and the growing process is a dying process. Dying yourself. And we battle with that. If people send you out, out, for instance, if I ask you, let's go out in the streets, let's go pray for people, guess what? There will be a lot of excuses. I, I agree with that. I'm one of them. Oh, Lord, I, I'm busy. and, and that, that, All this stuff. Guess what? It's all about you. I thought that you were dead. Amen? Let's go back to Colossians. Colossians 3. No longer I that live, but Christ in me. That's Galatians 2.20. Colossians 3, verse 3. I read that last time. Colossians 3, verse 3. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You died. Your lives is hidden in Christ. That means no excuse. The moment you start, God, but this and this, I'm not that, I'm not that, I can't do, I can't. Guess what? You're still alive. Amen? You're still alive. That's why you can't do anything. But the moment we say, Lord, I'm dead to myself. It's not what I'm willing. I'm willing to follow you. Guess what? Then the lion will appear. And then you will, we will rule and reign with him. Amen? And then we will destroy the works of the enemy. Are you still alive? Are you still the cat? If you don't die, you'll stay the cat. And the, dog of, the dogs of this world will chase you, destroy you. But if we die, we choose to die in his presence, he will transform us. He is the one that will transform you into the same image as he is. Let's go, we're going to read two verses, two scriptures. Um, let's go to Galatians, eight, uh, Galatians 4. Galatians 4 verse, verse 19. <clears throat> Galatians 4 verse 19. Paul is praying for his children. Listen, that's born again children. 
If he, if he talks about my little children, verse 19, he's talking to Christians. He said, my little children from whom I'm labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Until Christ is formed in you. That's Paul's heart. That Christ will be formed in us. The only way to get that is by dying in self. Lord, I'm by bowing before you. You Lord of my life. Come and rule and reign in me. Holy Spirit, come lead me. Come lead me from victory to victory. Last scripture I want to read is in uh, Ephesians 4. Just a few pages on. Ephesians 4. Verse 11 to 13. Ephesians 4. Verse 11 to 13. He said, And he himself gave some to be apostles, and some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For what? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. For edification of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of faith. And the knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man. To the measure. Listen carefully. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Why I, I'm ministering to you this message is if I'm one of the fivefold ministry, my, my, my um, teaching is to equip you, the saints, to equip you, the saints, that you will mature and be Christ like. Amen. Why? So that the kingdom of God will come in you and through your life. My brother and sister, that's why it's so important that you will know by heart. God wants to use you with your gifts and your talents. You strong enough to destroy the works of the enemy. Amen. You've got the potential, but the potential is by dying in yourself. Allowing Christ to be formed in us. And that's my prayer for each one of you. Each one of you that sit here in front of me. My prayer is, may Christ be revealed to you. So that you will become Christ-like as never before. Amen. You've got it. You've got it. You've got the Holy Spirit in you. That's all you need. Just make him Lord of your life. Let him rule and reign in your life. It's not about me. I'm afraid of this. No. Let the, let the cat die in you. Let the cat die in you. So that Christ will be seen through your life. Amen. Amen. And then we will live from victory to victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's God's calling for us, my brother and sister. Let's grow. The process of growing is by dying in itself. Allowing Christ Jesus to be revealed through our lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. You've created us. You've formed us. You saved us. So that we will be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So that we will destroy all the works of the enemy. God, you're for us. And that's why we can be more than conquerors. And I want to pray for each one that's hearing your word this morning. Help us, Father, by your spirit. That we will die in ourselves. And that we will become Christ-like. That Christ will be formed in us. That we will grow to the full stature of Christ. 
so that we will rule and reign with him. We want to die in ourselves. Father, we choose, this morning we choose to die in our nature and allow your nature to be our nature. That we'll be transformed from glory to glory in your presence, Father. That's our prayer this morning. For your name's sake. For your glory, Father. Amen, amen. It's a challenge, my brother and sister, and I'm challenging you not because God's not challenging me. God's challenging me too. But let's be the lion of, let's be Christ for the people around us. Amen? Amen. That's our calling. Let's be light. Let's be salt. Everywhere we go, that the fragrance of Christ will be smelled through our lives. Amen? Thank you so much. Pastor Peter.